Yo, what is good? Rand team, I'm RJ West, and I am back for another Where Should They Go From Here ser episode. And today we're looking at where the Orlando Magic should go from here. And so the Magic have some options. They have a top draft pick, from my understanding. They're projected to have the fifth pick. They're projected to have the fifth pick. Some mock drafts, oh this mock draft is completely weird, but like some mock drafts have the magic taking the Aaron Fox and to be quite honest, so right now I would say let's pull up the stats here. So Fournier is by far their best offensive player and he put up 17 points this past season only 68 games he was less efficient this year and I think I'm pretty sure there, I'm not sure what happened with that to be quite honest I mean he's a good shooter he can create I guess mainly because Frank Vogel had him creating more this year I'm not sure but Evan Fournier is a good shooter for Orlando he'd be a good shooter but if he's your leading scorer then I mean <laughs> that's not that's not something so terrific I mean you can make an argument that Nikola Vucevic is their best scorer but I'm not sure how you would feel about that either if either one of these guys is your best is your leading scorer then you really don't and then there's really something that going on that isn't right and so Aaron Gordon was is a guy that has a lot of potential and so the problem with Orlando right now is that Mario Hezonia isn't as good as we anticipated if he was better than he if he was better than uh, or if he's been as good as we hoped him to be then Alfred Payton and Aaron Gordon pick and roll with Evan Fournier and Hizonia on the wings, that could be something that would be really real, very real in Orlando, but that is not the case, and that is just another problem for me, because having a guy like, just, offensively this team is just not that impressive, defensively they're not much better, alright, I mean offensively they have some talent, so I wouldn't say that. We'll take a look at some of their team rankings, which I haven't done up to this point for anybody. But we'll take a look at the magic here. Yeah, see, 27th in offense, that's really not that good. There are a lot of great offensive teams. But then defensively, defensively, they were actually not that good either. <laughs> they were not the they were not at all better defensively. So this is a problem in Orlando. Right, but they're a young team, and the whole Serge Ibaka thing, trading for him, trading away Oladipo for Serge Ibaka, <sighs> that is something that I'm still kind of skeptical, skeptical about. I didn't think Alfred Payton and Victor Oladipo fit well together because they were both pretty ball dominant. But I thought that. They didn't get the right assets that they needed out of that Victor Oladipo trade because half a season of Serge Ibaka was not really that good. All right, they traded him to the Raptors and they got Terrence Ross was one of the pieces that they got in that deal. Can't quite remember who else it was, but in terms of this team, Terrence Ross is still 26. Nikola Vucevic could be a guy that they could trade. I mean, he or they can bring him off the bench. Maybe they can Greg Monroe him, like the Bucks have done to Greg Monroe. And then uh, Alfred Payton is a guy that I can still, I still feel like he can be a good point guard, a very solid point guard. He was actually more efficient this past season because he didn't take as many threes. Or no, he took more. Threes. He took more threes, but he's just more efficient this year he was more efficient this year because he took better shots i said i guess better shot selection and uh he's still pretty good defensively he'd be a pretty good playmaker too so 
he's a guy at point guard if he was your starting point guard i'm sure there are some teams that would like to have alfred payton it's not that many because this point guard the point guard position in today's nba is very deep but having a guy like alfred payton would be something that some teams might want because he's pretty good defensively and as a playmaker so he's just a traditional point guard one of those traditional two or pure point guards I would say but um, like I said this team Aaron Gordon so Aaron Gordon I haven't said this yet but Aaron Gordon is going to need to play fully at the power forward position because he's got he's pretty good defensively but he's uber athletic and he will be a good guy he could be a force inside pretty good rebounder so if they get a good pick and roll going with Aaron Gordon and Alfred Payton Aaron Gordon might need to develop his shooting a bit more he's got he can shoot if he's open for three but he might need to develop a mid-range and a three-point shot a little bit more to complete his game a little bit but as for trades potential trades I mean there's not much that you can really do with this team player contracts I mean they're stuck with Bismack Biombo and I mean the Bismack Biombo contract isn't that good because he wasn't I mean he wasn't that good defensively he wasn't he wasn't as good as they hoped him to be defensively I mean wasn't too bad I don't think but still wasn't as good as they hoped I wouldn't think but he's still a pretty good rebounder and uh, I mean we're just gonna have to see because he's only 24 so he could be something but Evan Fournier they're gonna need to get a small forward that can really be the star that they need to go along with Aaron Gordon because Terrence Ross is a guy he's a good role player offensively he's he can shoot and he can also finish at the rim defensively he's not too good he's not terrible either but Aaron Gordon is going to need to develop Mario Hezonia so far he hasn't been that impressive he's gonna need to develop a lot better but um, so far it looks like Hezonia and Bender the Croatian guys that had hype around him surrounding them so far they appear to be bust we'll see about Bender but So far, these guys don't seem to be very impressive. But now, anyways, I, ha I haven't... So let's take a look at the draft. Let's take a look at the draft. So, guys, if they can get Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum is a guy that they really should get. He'll be an excellent scorer. So, like, he won't need... He'll, he can... He's going to be, like, their best shot creator. I mean... He'll be instantly their best shot creator because Evan Fournier, he can create for himself a little bit, but Jason Tatum will be an instant shot creator. I thought that the Blazers might be able to have a chance to get him if they fell into the lottery, but they made the playoffs, so I mean, they might get Jonathan Isaac, which doesn't matter either, but getting Jason Tatum for the Magic, that could help him out because out of Duke, he can, he's just, I saw him in a couple of games and he's just a proficient mid-range shooter and he's got good potential so I have high hopes for Jason Tatum if the Magic can get him he could be the star that they need to get going moving forward or if they get, I mean if they get into the top three if they somehow get into the top three they could select a guy like Markel Fultz Lonzo Ball some franchise players for them but really Jason Tatum is the guy that they really want or they should they should really be looking to get so I mean Alfred Payton could still be a good point guard but bottom line I would say get Jason Tatum because Josh Jackson not entirely he's good defensively he's better defensively than Tatum but offensively he can't really put the ball in the basket as well so Jason Tatum should be their target and uh, that is going to be it for 
where the Magic should go from here. Maybe they could try and trade Nikola Vucevic if they want to. Somebody wants to trade for him. I don't know, but there's not really much that they can do in terms of trades. So they're going to need to spend their draft pick wisely wherever it lands. So I've been RJ West, and uh, I'm saying so long. Next team we will be taking a look at will be the Minnesota Timberwolves.